Coraline is, of course, a fantastic film and visual delight of stop-motion animation. YB, however, is a character from Coraline that people have mixed opinions about. Coraline's nearby neighbour, who is at first someone she dislikes before the two eventually become friends and work together to defeat the Bell Dam. The thing is, Coraline is originally a children's book, and YB isn't in that book at all. He was a total movie invention, and I think just creating an entire character out of no where to be one of the main characters in an already existing story. Doing that without his inclusion feeling forced or like knocking some of the pegs out of the original story is a really really hard thing to do. Some people don't like YB as a result. Why? Was he there? What does he add other than backing for some plot exposition? I wanted to talk about YB. I think partly to defend his inclusion in the film and why he does mostly work, but also to explore some of the depth he adds. Because he's not a character people often discuss for meaning, I'm going to do just that. Are you ready? I think it's worth stating that whilst I do like his inclusion in the film, I still prefer the original book to the movie overall. I think the book is a lot punchier in many of its ideas, and part of that is because it is more contained. Without YB, the focus is much more on Coraline herself, and the slimmer cast of characters just makes for a more contained, tighter story in my opinion. However, things inevitably have to change when adapting a book to movie, and often for so many reasons it's hard to describe, like the pacing being different, the structure, how a book chapter has more time to explore little mini arcs in ways where a film has to flow more directly. Sometimes there's things from the books that you imagine would work in your head in a film and then don't actually translate well into the movie and therefore need tweaking. And I think the obvious example here is internal monologues. In the book, you can just read Coraline's thoughts, there's descriptions of her reactions and feelings. Therefore, you don't often need as many characters for her to bounce off of, but in the film, you can do some of that visually, but not all of it. We can't get internal monologue, and therefore I think adding YB gives Coraline someone she can talk to, someone she can express her feelings and ideas to, so that we as the audience can follow along more really. It's quite a practical idea. At times Coraline has the cat to talk to, yes, more so in the books even. The argument then is why couldn't she just have the cat for more scenes, bounce off of the cat much more. However, A, the cat's own only talks back when in the other world and not the real world, which would make all of those conversations very one way, and B, I think if the cat was in way more scenes for Coraline to talk to, it would diminish a part of the cat's character. The idea of him coming and going as he pleases and being a bit wary of Coraline at first. The cat is great as a mysterious sort of wise figure to pop up every now and again with bits of advice or some suggestions and questions to raise, not so much as a companion type character. YB, on the other hand, he is another kid, meaning the back and forth Coraline can have with him is much more childish in nature than it would be with the cat. YB, I think, is a much better character to draw out some of Coraline's rougher personality. Is that the word? Rougher personality? It's not the word, is it? Um, <laughs> YB is someone Coraline can be much more mean and mopey and tetchy with, which is an aspect I really like about her character. Often movies have a tendency to try and make kids seem very, very good and sweet sweet and nice so that they don't annoy audiences because sometimes people find the more bratty qualities in the kids a bit annoying on screen. But I don't. I find them much more real and raw and it's meaningful to include it here. I don't think Coraline is at all annoying. I think she's human and YB is a good vehicle to draw a lot of that out. So that's a big part of why he works. He's a great vehicle for Coraline and also I think a good springboard for the film itself. If you look at how this movie begins, we get the like doll creation credit scene. Then this quick shot of the removal meant to show us that Coraline has just moved in here before we then see her wandering out with her dowsing rod. She gets scared by a cat, then gets even more scared by YB's ridiculously dramatic introduction. This is a core theme after all. Fear. 
It's the whole purpose behind creating a children's horror story, to help children explore and manage feelings of fear, so yeah. Start this film with Coraline scared by a strange noise, oh it's just a black cat, I don't need to be scared. Then oh my god there's some skeleton, ghost rider, air horn thing. Nope it's just some weird neighbour, I don't need to be scared again. I think seeing Coraline scared here over things that are actually safe is an important contrast to how brave she has to be later on. Yeah, yeah, you could just do that with simply the cat here but I think this second beat with YB helps much more to have this moment land and then we do also get a good bit of intrigue Grandma is calling Wybie away. She's always very anxious about him going near the house and Wybie is very surprised Coraline has moved in there. Grandma ordinarily never lets children live in that house. That's odd. Raises questions in the audience. It's very good setup for the film. Wybie is a very organic way to deliver that because we do get to see and feel all of this anxiety and fear from the grandma. So that's point one as a whole. Yes. When you adapt a film, you're often forced to find different ways to express some of the ideas, and YB works really well for that. Again, I do prefer the book, but it doesn't mean adapting something differently is bad. There's different advantages and disadvantages. I'm sure also somebody once told me that the original script for this film was much closer to the original book, until Neil Gaiman, the original author, read the script and told them no, that's too similar, an adaptation should be more different. And I agree with that. I think difference is personally what I tend to like. But what are the bigger points? And if I'm a water witch, then where's the secret witch? Well, Danville. You stomp too hard and you'll fall in it. Whoa, Danville. Yep, they sponsored this video, they're still here, hopefully they'll stay here. Uh, Wild Anvil is an online tool for building worlds, creating characters, designing and managing campaigns for a whole sleuth of games. Sleuth isn't the right word, I don't know why I said that. Look, you can do all that, you can plan and write stories, you can do all sorts of different stuff for creative projects. I use it for the world building of my novel because my old system of massive words documents became far too chaotic. Not only does the ability to create timelines with hyperlinks branching off to specific characters or articles or a billion other things, not only does that make it so much easier to quickly find the information I need, it also makes it so much easier to plan things out and kind of keep going. Sometimes a blank word document for world building is very daunting, so having all sorts of tools to help with visualisation, to help you figure out what needs planning next, to keep your brain fizzing and unimpeded, because all of the tools are very straightforward and easy to use, that's really important to me. It's like the sharper an artist's pencils, the freer they are to focus on the art. World Anvil is a very sharp pencil. You can create mind maps, you can rearrange elements of your story, do all sorts of campaign related things for that sleuth of games I mentioned. Um, yes, link in the description and as a pinned comment should you desire a 51% discount on all their subscriptions or if you're not yet sure then try out the free version for as long as you like. That's what I did at first and now look where I am, <laughs> shouting their name at you through a screen. Well done, Phil. Firstly, YB is a very interesting character. All of his nervous mannerisms are so well animated, set against the somewhat oblivious nonchalance he shows in other moments. Visually, his thick black coat and semi-motorbike bicycle is a nice contrast to Coraline's yellow and blue, so that's true, but more importantly, we can sense depth that the film is only hinting at with YB. Okay, sometimes expressing very bluntly, his name is Yborn. Coraline even very helpfully points it out for us. Oh, I definitely heard someone. Why were you born? YB was an unwanted child. Being named that is both heartbreaking and a bit too on the nose for my liking. Is this why he has been raised by his grandma rather than parents? Quite possibly. Thematically, that's really important when you stop for a second and remember the biggest theme in this film, bigger than ideas of fear, is about being loved, feeling listened to, cherished, wanted by your parents. This is a film all about exploring Coraline's feelings that she is being neglected in place of work by her parents. And so then, here is another child whose name is Why Were You Born? and was most likely abandoned by his parents altogether. In that sense, perhaps not wanted, not feeling loved. The story never makes the comparison between his and Coraline's home situation. I think it's good that it never does. It's better to just leave it subtly alluded 
to, but the fact we just have that information hanging in the background of the story as a great comparison to the whole point of Coraline's own arc, I think that is so poignant. Doubly poignant if you ever watched my previous video on Coraline where I talked about ideas of friendship, because um, Coraline feels alone in this story. Her parents are too busy to play with her. It's a long summer holiday, she's in an entirely new home miles away from her old friends and she hasn't started at a new school where she can make new friends. Combine that with the fact Coraline is also at an age where she is starting to assert independence from her parents, exploring her own individuality away from them as much as she does definitely want them more, we also see her push them away at other moments. So wanting connection, wanting to spend more time but also wanting some independence from her parents as well, I think in that sense baked into Coraline's character, a close friend is exactly what she needs right now. And I find the first scene we get with YB quite sweet in that sense, because Coraline is angry with him there. She's been caught at a moment where she looks a bit foolish in front of someone new, and so she's deliberately being a bit aloof, trying to seem more assured. There's a tetchy back and forth that so fits with children at that age, and yet you can sense them kind of getting along. You can sense this is fun could be fun, only Coraline is too busy pushing him away to actually recognise that. It takes the majority of the film for her to recognise it. She has another scene where she complains about him being annoying and not listening and yet is also clearly having fun. Ew. <laughs> And then the other mother makes an other YB, and because Coraline found YB annoying, the other mother makes this version of him unable to speak, which she likes. I like it. You know, the other mother is recognising Coraline needs a friend, even if she seems to not like YB, but then in stripping away all the parts that Coraline find annoying about him, she's also actually stripped away the friend. He becomes not a person to engage with, but just a bit part to her, a companion to carry along the same way you'd carry a dog about. All the same, he then does get to express himself somewhat through action, he gets to help Coraline against the other mother. Then Coraline finds the real YB and this time she is pleased to see him, wants his help. But when he is confused by her ramblings about some other mother, she can't help getting angry and pushing him away again. And so finally, only at the very end of this movie does he come back in to help her and now their friendship is secured. I'm glad you decided to stalk me. <laughs> so that is an arc about friendship the film has entirely invented on its own, but it just fits perfectly for Coraline's character. It adds that extra dimension when we've already seen her sad about losing her old friends and uneasy about the idea of a new school. But I mentioned Wybie's situation with his parents and I suggested it was doubly poignant without explaining why, and I suppose what I meant is if Coraline's main struggle this film is all about feeling forgotten and ignored by her parents. YB is then not just a friend in general that she's been needing, but he is the perfect person to talk to about that feeling. The perfect person to connect with about that. Here he is right at the very beginning of this movie, as the exact thing Coraline needs in so many ways, but she keeps on pushing him away, and instead gets enthralled and manipulated by what the other mother offers. YB is a great contrast to the other mother in that way, and I just think that's great. I think it's really, really great. I also have this loose theory that where the other mother uses this magic mud to cure Coraline's rash from holding the poison oak, this muddy handshake from YB is the reason she doesn't get rash on her right hand, only her left. Which, if it's true, is just another nice hint that YB is already the positive influence that the other mother is attempting to present herself as. And if we also consider how against Mud Coraline's mum is, the idea of Mud then I think cements YB as a friend who shares her interests and can offer something beyond just dependence on her parents. To speak more generally, I do really like how fearful YB often is as well. I think that's a reflection of all his grandma's anxieties about the Beldam. She's constantly impressed all sorts of dangers and warnings onto YB about this house, but also never actually explains the rationale behind it, and it just adds extra layers again to YB. On the one hand, he quite possibly feels abandoned or neglected by his parents, hence the very blunt name. On the other hand, he's got a grandma who struggles with him being out of her sight for too long. She is very eager to keep him close, somewhat suffocatingly so, in a non-sinister inverse of the Beldam's own controlling nature towards children. And then YB is in the middle of a 
all of that, just trying to find a bit of freedom and some independence and to explore who he is. The thing that makes YB most impressive to me is that unless you knew the book already, I don't think you'd be aware that YB wasn't originally in this story. I think he fits so seamlessly into the movie as a main character, enhances so many of the themes that it's a hell of a feat to pull off in writing. The only direct point where I'll say I don't think it works is his ending. It's quite convoluted to explain. Um, after mostly defeating the Bell Dam, freeing her parents, getting back to the real world and locking the portal for good, the ghost children then come to warn Coraline in a dream that it's not over just yet, there's still the key to unlock that portal again. What if the other mother gets hold of the key? What if someone else opens it? One of her claw hands has also managed to escape through the door. So Coraline rushes out to the well at night with the idea to throw the key down it. She's not aware the hands escape and that it's following her. We see it and we get a little build of tension and then it ambushes her, almost stealing the key until YB rides in on his bike, fights back and then they both throw the hands down the well before sealing it up. Um, to me, this moment feels a bit too much like we need YB to do something helpful in order to complete his arc at the end here, so let's just have him swoop in and save the day. Feels a little generic to me, even if it's a nice parallel to how they begin this film with the well and him riding in on the bike. I think it undermines Coraline a little, who has a great moment here in the book of tricking the hand. In the book, she's secretly aware that it's following her, so she very loudly talks about preparing a tea party with the doll announcing how the key is going to be at the center of the game. She's going to place it in between all the dolls. So she sets it all out on top of a covered well as a deliberate trap. She pretends to not be looking and then the hand jumps in to steal the key but falls straight down the well. I think it's a nice moment of trickery and the confidence composure with which she does that all I think is the perfect conclusion to an arc about fear. And again, an adaptation can be different and can do things slightly worse than the original without it necessarily being bad in itself, so it's not the difference itself that's my problem. In the film, Coraline A has to be ambushed and almost defeated in order for YB to get something to do here, and B she has to look afraid. Coraline here is very scared creeping out to the well at night, but I think that feels odd to me after everything she's just gone through fighting a spidery other mother. I think this kind of emotional beat of her being afraid and singing her dad's song to herself as a way to kind of steal her courage, I think that beat should have happened earlier in this film. That should have come when she dared to creep back into the other world, knowing the dangers that were lurking there. Whereas having faced a load of dangers and just walking out to a well at night not believing there is anyone following her, that just feels a bit odd to me and I think all of that makes this final beat in the film feel a bit tacked on rather than it being like the big climax to everything and that is a bit of a shame partly caused by YB so I will say that. That's my one real criticism of YB. Otherwise, I'm going to say nothing more and ask you all what you think. Comment your thoughts, good or bad. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe, maybe even support me on Patreon or buy me a coffee. But otherwise, hopefully see you next time. And as ever, a special thank you goes to Flying Spider, Grace, Kellyanne Davidson, Luke Hoare, Michael Gallagher, Chad Bramwell and Joshua C. Follier. Thank you.